When the first light was still questing forth, all were one, and his name was Primus the warrior god, forged in the universal furnace. Conceived as a reaction to his opposite as Primus walked the surface of Cybertron, across the miracle planet, he felt an urgency in his body, something hot and coiled and ruthless, a nest of sparks. Without hesitation he broke apart his body, giving the lives inside him full force of expression. And so one became five. Mortalus, the Deathbringer, the necessary corollary to life. Solomus, Wisdom Incarnate. Primus, Light Giver, Life Giver. Episthmus, Knowledge Personified. Adaptus, Blessed with an infinity of shapes, together they were known as the Guarding Hand, a nurturing presence, forever remote but always within reach. The hand populated the planet with a single gesture, and thus began the first golden age. The guiding hand withdrew. Their work done. They stepped back into the light. All except one. Mortius, the life taker, wanted more. All those worlds beyond Cybertron's pristine horizon, all those lives crying out to be cut short. Death, he decided, should come to all, to every population on every planet. But first, he had to hone his skills. He used Luna 1 as staging ground from which to attack Cybertron. He invented thousand ways to kill from afar. Each one more wretched and macabre than the last. But Mortalis was restless. He believed that the hand should become a fist, striking out of the rest of the universe. The other members of the Guiding Hand were forced to re-emerge. Primus. Adagis. Solons. Epistonius. And so began the God War. But Meridilus was ready. Meridilus had thought ahead. Meridilus had laid traps. Adapt's god of change, was flayed alive, reduced to a naked transformation cog. Epistemus, god of knowledge was tricked into rejecting his body. Piece by piece. Until he was no more than an untethered brain module. And Solum Lus, god of wisdom, was reduced to a thought, half impulse, half reaction, and locked inside a crystal prison. With each defeat Primus grew weaker. Sensing his imminent demise, he fashioned a cascade, Vector Sigma, and then all that he was, all that he had left, he directed at the enemy. A bolt of divine light leapt from Cybertron to Luna 1, and sent it careening through space. And the first moon was ripped asunder. There was a division. There was a disharmony. The hand began to lose its grip. Mortalus stood against Primus, triggering a conflict so great that Cybertron shuddered. Mortalis was eventually destroyed, but at a great cost to the rest of the Guiding Hand. Close to death, Primus sought refuge at the heart of Cybertron, reintegrating himself with the fold of circuitry from which he had first sprung. Over time his body became known as Vector Sigma, the source of all sparks, all sentience. Mortalis' last act had been to trap Solomus within a crystal prison, but, the wise Solomus was able to reconfigure his prison so that it became a conduit for Vector Sigma. But more than life, his gift to future generations was his wisdom. Epistmus and Adaptus were not so lucky, Mortalus stripped them there, reducing Epistmus to a brain module and Adaptus to a transformation cog. Before they died they offered themselves up as blueprints for future generations, thereby ensuring that Cybertronians had the intellect and the functionality to meet the demands made by their environment. The God War was over and millions of Cybertronians were dead. But the Guiding Hand would not. Even Mortius survived. The five of them pooled their resources, merged their minds, and built a bridge to another world, a world they called the Afterspark, where Cybertronians would live forever. Unlike those who had been killed in the God War. And because more or less had been killed, because death itself had died, the sparks of future Cybertronians would burn forever. The generations of Cybertronians who first inherited these gifts, sentience, wisdom, intellect, change and immortality, vowed to put them to good use and live their miracle world, to spread peace and happiness across the universe. Over time, they became known as the Knights of Cybertron. Cybertron, long long ago. Damn you, don't let me win. Rawg. I have little choice in the matter. How amusing, but why the hesitation? Finish him. He is my brother. Like you, he is not but a Primus condemned barbarian. We have insufficient Energon for both of you, thus the reign of the twins must cease. And if your combat amuses we supplicants of Arius. So much the better. 
finish your brother or join him. It's something that develops. New are out. Perhaps they can really go to speed. Who? Who dares defile the parapet of Septimus Prime? I'm the first to lose that. Do you understand my words? I'm from the place of shadows and my darkness knows no limits. Now this area is here something can do. He is our god of wisdom and providence. We fight and die in his name. Ah, I know the god. In the dark lands we call him so long as such you. Tell me your name. Arcee. Beside me is my brother Galvatron. What is it? In the name of the Lord of the Dark Lands shall envelop you. I shall never join your horde. I wasn't speaking to you, Sentinel's Prime. But I was speaking to the barbarians. Perhaps I was hasty with my words. And thus began the first unification of Cybotron. On that day that future seemed a destination. But of course, it is not. History is a path. One that often circles back on itself. But for a planet in chaos the promise of unity was the light of hope. A story we told ourselves to steal against the night. Regardless of our apprehensions about Onyx Prime and Lead Maximo, the First Council agreed to band together against the Darklanders. Onyx's menagerie trained our farmers as best they could. But time was short and the twins freed from the servitude, with the vanguard of the Horde marched toward our crystal city. The battle was fierce, and the future of Cybertron hung in balance, as it so often does. I should be with our people. You're more valuable here, Nexus. They need us for our minds, not our fists. But things are looking bad. Such is the way of combat, storyteller. If war looked good, why would we do anything else? And that is when the Titans paid us a visit. The original three. Trotplex, first and greatest of them all. Chalap, the Golden Warrior. And Metro Titan, it made. We had heard tales, legends, that they had served Primus, and walked with his opposite. But those stories, I never believed them to be true. Needless to say, the fighting stopped, which was what Onyx was counting on. Out of the way, brother. He sliced through the Darklanders faster than thought. But when he confronted the enemy commander, Onyx. Megatronus. I hadn't realized it was you. They greeted each other as old friends. The battle stopped as they declared a truce and unification. I don't get it. But they know each other. What have we wrought? We forged a future Alpha Trion. As we set out to do. The Crystal City glowed in victory as the peoples of the Light and the Dark, of Beasts and Titans, celebrated. Allow him his revelry. Storyteller. Storyteller, it seems you are spinning your own tales, Onyx. That was the next logical course, and here, on these woven wires, I have something to present you. If Primus did walk this ground, the symbol of a united Cybertron should be his face. How? How do you know the face of Primus? Metro Titan once served the guiding hand. He described Primus' countenance. There is a difference between saying all stories are true, and believing all lies. Well, my friend. I look forward to discovering if that is true. I know the answer. Arcee. Nexus will be joined by his brother from the East, and the Northern Alliance will stand with you. That will make 13 primes, and the lie you will believe is that you're better than the rest of us. Your brother seems not to be distressed by this, Arcee. Galvatron likes hierarchy. He just didn't like his place when he was the slave. Then I suppose it is down to you to keep us in our place. Where are you going? Maybe I want to talk to a Titan, and see the sights of Cybertron, before it all changes.